What is up? What is up? Welcome to another episode of Blood and Beer, the show where I drink beer and I talk blood sports, such as MMA and boxing, if they ever uh, have anything popping off that I'm interested in. I wish they would soon. Today we're talking Sean Strickland versus Jack Hermanson, UFC Fight Night 2-0-0, 200 baby. And today's beer, we're drinking a Columbus Brewing Company's IPA. We're going to see how this is. Actually, I opened it a second ago. Uh, this is my second take because I fucked up my intro, but it's delicious. I'll go ahead and finish this one off, um, and we'll jump right into it. Uh, but today's today's show, we're just going to be talking the fights coming up this weekend, and then our picks for the fights, and then uh, this weekend after the fight, we'll go ahead and recap, talk the news, and what we'd like to see next. But today is all about UFC Fight Night 200. Uh, I can't wait. I'm a big Sean Strickland fan. I like Jack Hermanson, too. Um, Treshawn Gore, Brian Battle is going to be in it. Sam Alvey, smiling, losing Sam. Can't fucking wait. Um, sorry, I'm distracted. All right. So uh, some of the fights that we have on the on the prelims that I'm interested in, um, only two really that I'm like kind of pumped up for. You got. Uh, Bill Rowe versus Jason Witt. Um, that'll be a fun matchup. Phil Rowe's got a huge height advantage. He's six foot three. Jason Witt's, I think, five ten. Um, Phil Rowe is pretty tall for his weight class, and this fight's gonna go one of two ways. I think I say that a lot, but Phil Rowe's probably gonna, if he if he gets the victory, it's gonna be because he pieced him apart from the outside, picked him apart with his jab, leg kicks, used his range to find him. Just keep him on the outside. He might score a knockout doing that. Um, for Jason Witt, his path to victory, I would imagine, would be to get him up against the cage, try to grind it out, make it a dirty boxing match, keep it in the clinch, get some takedowns, ride it out that way, um, ground and pound, of course. So I'm not going to make picks on the prelims because I'm not talking about all the prelim fights today. But if I was to make a pick, I'd go with the underdog and say Jason Witt because it seems like uh, if you're not a super, super high-level striker, a lot of these wrestlers, average MMA wrestlers even, they can kind of figure you out just by pressuring you, crowding you, and breaking that range. But if Phil Rowe finds it early, then I'm, I would have to say Phil Rowe takes it. I just I think that uh, I think Jason Witt's going to pull it off, pull off the minor upset. Another fun one on this undercard, prelims, we have uh, Hakeem Dewadu versus Michael Triziano. Triziano is the Ultimate Fighter Season 27 winner. Hakeem Dewadu, he's a super uh, super talented striker. He's uh, He was on a five-fight winning streak. He lost his last one. But uh, he's, he's fun to watch fight. I think that he's probably going to score a knockout in this one. That's my guess. Not sure. But that would be nice to see. And it, it could also, these guys, they're, they're warriors. They're going to fight. This could be a, a, a dark horse for fight of the night. We'll have to wait and see. I don't have a whole lot to see about it, to say about it, but I, I think Duwadu's taking it. Just who the fuck knows. Ah, that's, that's a good beer. Um, normally I, 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 I tell you about it. Right, right as I take my first drink, but that is a that is a really good beer, Columbus Brewing Company IPA, brew here in Ohio, I imagine, because it says Columbus. I'd be surprised if it's not, and honestly, a little disappointed. I'd be a little disappointed if it wasn't. That'd be quite the fucking sham, because all my beers so far, I think, have been brewed relatively locally. Um, there's only been three, and I think the first one I didn't really have a special beer, I guess. But fuck it, fuck it. Um, and if you have suggestions before we get on to the main card, if you have suggestions about uh, some beers to try for the card, and don't give me Coors Light, Bud Light, Bush, I, I like that stuff. That stuff's my favorite, I, of course. But give me some suggestions on some weird, fancy beers that I wouldn't normally drink. I'm white trash, so I normally drink, honestly, Coors Light, Miller Light, and uh, Bush Light. But I want to hear about IPAs, I want to hear about. Uh, loggers, if you got any good ones of them, 
just uh, shoot me some some uh, suggestions in the comments. All right. With that being said, on to the main motherfucking card, and this is actually going to be a banger. In my last episode, I said the card looked like it sucked. I think I overlooked a lot of the names on it, or maybe they just weren't showing on ESPN at that time. Um, <clears throat> but starting off the fight card, we have Julian Arosa versus Steven Peterson. Both dudes are uh, pretty experienced, pretty well-rounded also. They have a few knockouts and a lot of submissions to their name. Neither has ever been submitted. Arosa's been on this little submission tear. I think he lost his last one or one of his last ones, but other than that, he's been on fire getting these submissions. Uh, Peterson's been awesome too. I think Arosa's a huge favorite and I have to agree with that. My pick for this fight's going to be Arosa and I think he's going to give Jordan or Jordan, Steven Peterson his first submission loss and I think it'll be some some weird thing that he does because Arosa's really experienced and 23 of his 26 wins are by stoppage with 12 submissions. Um, so I'm going to go with what I think is the obvious choice and say it's going to be a Rosa. <coughs> but we'll have to wait and see. That's going to be a fun one to watch. Can't freaking wait. Trying to watch the F-bomb a little bit. Ah. Yeah, Rosa's a gamer, so that's why I'm going with him, though. I just have a feeling he's going to pull it out and start the main card off with a bang, with a hot submission. Maybe he'll get a bulldog choke. Maybe he'll do head and arm triangle. I don't know. He's he's pretty crafty down there. And then next up, we have what should have been the Ultimate Fighter uh, finale with Treshawn Gore versus Brian Battle. Now this fight is something I was so excited to see when it got announced on the show. And then like a week after the show announced it, they said uh, Treshawn Gore had an injury and had to pull out. So they put Gilbert Urbana in there. Brian Battle submitted him, and he looked great doing it. He's got really good wrestling, really good jujitsu. Other than uh, Gilbert, he also uh, he also submitted Andre Petrovsky. I think his guy's name, the number one pick for. Sorry. The number one pick for uh, the number one pick for the other team. I can't even think the coaches right now. Goddamn. Oh, uh, Ortega versus Volkanovski. Brian Battle submitted uh, Ortega's number one pick and he did it pretty impressively because um, Petrovsky, I think, was the uh, hands-down favorite to win the show. So Brian Battle's well-rounded. He's got good striking and great jiu-jitsu. I thought this whole season was a lot of fun to watch. All these guys seemed like they really wanted to fight um, and they really went out there and put on a show. That being said, Treshawn Gore is no exception to that. He was putting on a fucking show, getting knockouts. Um, dude's a stud. He can strike. He's he's a little green. He's only got four professional fights, but he can strike hard, man. Guy's a gamer also. Um, my head, I have it written down that I'm picking Treshawn Gore. And my gut's telling me Treshawn Gore, but my head's telling me it's going to be Brian Battle. Just because he's very well rounded, and this guy has that like just drive to win. I'm not saying Treshawn Gore doesn't, but when you watch Brian Battle fight, he doesn't look like he's the most skilled out there. He doesn't look like the most technical guy, um, the most, the fastest, the strongest, or any of that. He's big, but don't he's definitely big. But he just he seems like he goes out there and he wills himself to victory. So I'm gonna change my pick that I have down here. And I'm going with Brian Pooh Bear Battle. That's my brother's nickname also is Pooh Bear or Voodoo. Um, but Brian Pooh Bear Battle for the victory and the rightful Ultimate Fighter Championship. Um, or the Ultimate Fighter Season 28 or 29 uh, Championship. He deserves that. And he did actually win it. But this is the, you know, this is the real matchup that everybody wanted to see. And I think he's going to take it home. Treshawn does it then there's some controversy there because he was the one that should have been in it in the first place it was Treshawn Gore versus Brian Pooh Bear alright enough of that on to one of my favorite fighters smiling Sam Alvey and he's fighting Brendan Allen <clears throat> um, let's pause for a drink for Sam 
and his incredible losing streak. So yeah, Sam Alvey is on a pretty substantial losing streak. Um, let me look it up real quick while I'm talking, but he is getting called out by just about everybody in the UFC that has ever had a loss or a losing streak of their own or people that have been cut by the UFC. They're saying, how the fuck is this guy still here and I'm not? Um, and, you know, it makes sense them being upset because, I mean, it's it's almost unbelievable that he hasn't been cut from the UFC yet. I'm a huge Sam Alvey fan, but let's see. Uh, 2021, he lost three fights. No, two fights. One got canceled. Uh, 2020, he lost... He had a draw, so that's not bad. But then he lost one to Ryan Spawn, so... Lost to Jimmy Crute, lost... I mean, we're looking at, like, seven or eight. His last win was against a guy named Mar Marcin Procinio, and that was in 2018, February of 2018. So we're going on three years, four years since my boy won. That being said, he's strong as fuck. He puts on a show every time. I thought he deserved the last fight because he got that shit poked out of his eye. The guy probably should have been disqualified or had more points taken than what were. But uh, he didn't get the victory there, and that was bullshit. Fuck that guy. Um, and I forget who the ref was, but that wasn't cool. And then Brendan Allen. Can't forget about him. He's uh, he's coming off a KO loss to Chris Curtis. He was kind of piecing Curtis apart, but Curtis did what he did to uh, Phil Dawes. Phil Hawes. Is that who he fought? I think it was Phil Hawes. But, uh, you know, he... Chris Curtis was, has been getting pieced up in both of his UFC fights. And then he comes out and gets the knockout of the TKO. He's looking great. But that's not who we're talking about. We're talking about Brendan Allen. And he's super skilled. He's a good striker. A really good striker. I mean, he's he's solid. And the only thing that I think could save Sam is that Brendan Allen did recently get stopped. He might be a little shaken in there. Might be a little nervous. And Sam's a big guy for the weight class. He can strike. Um, not the most technical, but he's got that, that, I think it's his left hand that just puts people, used to put people to sleep. I'm going with smiling Sam Alvey. My head's telling me no, my gut's telling me no, but my heart's telling me Sam motherfucking Alvey getting the victory, snapping this like eight fight winless streak. Let's fucking go, Sam. Here's a drink for you again, my boy. But yeah, I mean seriously, this dude, everybody, and especially in his weight class that gets cut by the UFC, they love to bring him up. They say, why the fuck is Sam Alvey still on the roster? I mean, he's been losing for years. They're not wrong. He's still on the roster because he'll fight anybody. This fight, Brendan Allen took on a four-day notice, but Sam Alvey had to accept that fight on a four-day notice. Um, you know, his camp hasn't been for Brendan Allen. But it's going to be a tough fight for him. I'm sure Brendan Allen stays in shape and has been ready for this. Uh, but, yeah. If I was betting, I wouldn't bet on Sam Alvey. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. That'd be a pretty good payout, I think, that uh, he's like a minus or a plus 300 underdog. So, yeah, I'd bet on Sam Alvey. Just because he's strong and Brendan Allen's stoppable. Enough of that. Next fight. Super fun. Shavkat. Can't even. I don't know how to say his first name, but Shavkat Rachmanov. Rachmanov. Dude's 27 from Kazakhstan. He's a beast. He, he can really fight. Um, he's undefeated. So, obviously, undefeated in the UFC also. He's got two submission wins in the UFC, but, you know, his wins come from everywhere in his other fights. He's taken on Carlston Harris, who's. Also, I believe, undefeated in the UFC. Hasn't fought the same uh, pedigree of fighters, I don't think, that Rachmanov has. He's a lot older. I think he's 34. But this is going to be a fun fight. Both are well-rounded fighters. Um, 
I think that Rachmanov's probably going to get a first round stoppage. This dude has a hype train that nobody's talking about, but I think they will be after UFC 200. Dude's a dude's a force to be reckoned with at 170. Um, yeah, he's going to crack into the top 10 soon, and he he's going to be someone to be fucked with. He's fun to watch fight. So I'm going with Rachmanov, and I'm going to pick the style of finish. It's going to be a submission. He's going to have three submission victories in the UFC. So... Let's go Rachmanov. This fight, I was lazy about. They have like a combined 16 fights between the two. I don't mean to downplay the card, but it's uh, Soriano, I can't pronounce his first name, versus uh, Maximov. I don't know much about either of the guys. Maximov's undefeated. He's got a lot cooler name. So we're going with Maximov. We could be we could be way wrong though. I mean, who the fuck knows? Because like I said, I didn't do my research on that uh, on that fight. I just I'm not sure why it's on the main card honestly. Because it seems like the fights that I've already gone over could have made up the undercard for the main card, and then we move in to Sean Strickland versus Jack Hermanson. This fight is going to be pretty fun. Sean Strickland's super fun to watch fight. Jack Hermanson's also a super entertaining fighter. Um, Hermanson has really good jiu-jitsu, really good wrestling. Pretty okay striking. And not saying okay like uh, he can, he's, he's okay. No, this dude's got good striking. Sean Strickland, I think, has great striking, great pressure. The dude's a talker. Just says whatever comes to mind. I don't know if that motorcycle accident gave him brain damage, but I love this guy. He's uh, He recently knocked out his sparring partner, which I guess wasn't cool, but it was pretty cool if you saw the kick. Um, and Hermanson, you know, he can get you from anywhere on the ground, and he can hold his own with just about anyone on the feet. I don't know how this fight's going to go, but I'm hoping for Strickland. I think that uh, Hermanson definitely has... The experience, even though they both have a ton of fights. But what a lot of people don't see or don't look at is Sean Strickland is undefeated at middleweight. 17-0. and 0. His only three losses have come at welterweight. So Sean Strickland, I mean, he's a fucking beast. Dude beat Uriah Hall, who I talked about in my last, uh, my last show. He's, Uriah Hall is not to be fucked with, but he just couldn't find an answer for... Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland puts the pressure on. If uh, if he feels like you need to, he'll talk to you the whole fight like nothing's happening. He loves to go out there and do it. I'm picking Strickland in this fight because the dude's a psychopath. And I just think that he he's a fighter that fights and he could probably be anybody now that he's at the right weight class. Um, he was talking this week and he was saying how a lot of people... he was People were asking about his uh, fight week preparation and this guy he goes listen I don't know how people rest and relax on the week of fight week I'm sparring up until the day of he just he needs that he needs that fight that competitiveness he needs to get hit in the face and he loves it he's somebody that truly lives for for this and if you listen to him talk you can tell he really does he just the stuff he says is so bizarre it's it's a sight to see. I mean, Sean Strickland is an entertaining fellow. He uh, he would get canceled if he had his own TV show. Get canceled in a heartbeat, and not on purpose, just because he says stuff that sounds so horrible a lot of times. Not offensive, just fucking horrible. Offered to fight Jake Paul to the death on a deserted island. Not a boxing match. Not MMA to the death. Um, like I said, he knocked out that sparring partner just because. Then he posted it on his Instagram because he was proud of it. Because he doesn't give a fuck what you think or what I think. But if he did, I'd want to let him know. That was fucking cool. I hope you uh, get a nice little knockout this weekend against Jack Hermanson. Um, I'm excited for these cards. Let me see what time they're on real quick before we go. Because um, this is going to be a fun thing to watch this weekend. 
prelims at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. for the main card, Eastern, of course. That'd be odd if they changed the metrics uh, per card, because they'd be overlapping, of course. I, uh, yeah, I recommend this beer. Um, I recommend it. It's pretty, pretty goddamn good. Thank you for stopping by to check out the show. Uh, it might have been a little sloppy today. I'm still getting used to this thing, you know? Um, I appreciate anybody stopping by, though. And um, this Sunday, we're going to be dropping another show. Today's came out a couple days early just to give people time to check it out, to give people time to see it and uh, get invested in this card. And any of my friends or acquaintances that want to come over and watch this card, definitely let me know. Um, I'll throw it on the big screen. Got plenty of seating. It'll probably be one of my last cards in this house. At the new house, I'm hoping to have this set up, but we're going to have a lot more shows in this house because, yeah. But we'll have a different setup, different background, different everything at the new one. Um, who knows how long we'll have the big screen for the UFC. Might be going in the bedroom. Who the fuck knows? I'm a little drunk. Thank you for stopping by. This has been Blood and Beer. My name's Matt. I'm your host. If you want to come on the show, let me know. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, find us on Facebook, Blood and Beer Combat Sports. It's Blood and Beer colon Combat Sports, I believe, is uh, is the title. And, uh, f yeah, join the group on Facebook. Let us know what you think of the show in the comments. Uh, I appreciate anybody and everybody that views this. And we'll see you next time. It'll be coming out this Sunday, probably around uh, somewhere between 7 and 10 p.m. So you'll have all week to watch it. And I appreciate you tuning in.